Welcome science fans, Mr. Duff here. I want to introduce my new video, Adaptations and Ecosystems with Mr. Duff the Science Buff. And remember, who needs Bill Nye the Science Guy when you got Mr. Duff the Science Buff. Mr. Duff the Science Buff. Duff, 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 Duff. Mr. Duff the Science Buff. Science rules. Mr. Duff the Science Buff. Mr. Duff the Science Buff. Okay, I'll do it. Jeez. What an annoying man. Are you filming? Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Dorsey, and I'm here to talk to you today about what an adaptation is. Adaptation is the act or process of changing to better suit a situation. An adaptation can be physical or it can be behavioral. For example, a polar bear's fur is an example of a physical adaptation. My behavior has changed with Mr. Duff being around. I adapt by avoiding him as much as possible. Okay, but can we get a little bit more specific? What is a physical adaptation? A physical adaptation is when your body changes to help you survive. Our hands have thumbs. Thumbs are a physical adaptation. We have opposable thumbs that help us grab things. Try grabbing something without your thumb. It's much more difficult. Hey, how about a thumb joke? What did the thumb say to the finger? I'm in glove with you. Oh, okay. So what is a behavioral adaptation then? Behavioral adaptations are actions plants and animals use to survive. For example, bears hibernate during the winter and birds migrate south. I'm going to go outside. Oh, it's 86 degrees outside. Probably should take my coat off. That's an example of a behavioral adaptation. This is my kitchen window. You should see my kitchen window at night. There's all kinds of lizards hanging out around it. Why are lizards hanging around my kitchen window? Because there's insects attracted to the light. So the lizards want to eat the insects that are attracted to light. It's pretty smart, isn't it? That's called a learned behavior. Want to hear a joke? What do lizards use on their bathroom floor? Reptiles. Mr. Duff, the science buff here. Remember, we are talking about adaptations. There's two different types, behavioral adaptations and physical adaptations. You see those geese out there? What kind of adaptation do you think they have? This is Eli. Eli lives in my closet. <laughs> what kind of physical adaptation do you think Eli has? Well, giraffes have really long necks that help them reach food sources way up high in the trees that other land animals can't get to. Guess what Eli's favorite joke is? Why don't zebras like giraffes? Because they look down on them. It's an ecosystem. Well, look behind me. That is an ecosystem. Stop pestering me. It's just so annoying. Hi, I'm Mrs. Strost, and I'm here to tell you about an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a geographic area where plants, animals, other organisms and landscapes work together to form a bubble of life. For example, like a wetland. I wish there was a certain person that would stay out of my ecosystem. Mr. Duff, the science buff. Mr. Duff here. This is also an ecosystem. By the way, I'm at 6,200 feet in the North Carolina mountains. Mr. Duff here in a tree. I'm here to talk about instinct. Instinct is when an organism just knows how to do something. It's inborn. For example, a spider knows how to make a spider web. 
Now check this out. This is a bird nest. Do birds go to school to know how to build a nest? No, they just know how to do it. That's instinct. I wonder if there's any eggs in this bird nest. Wouldn't that be exciting? This is a lionfish. This is a Chinese tallow tree. What do you think they have in common? They're both invasive species. What is an invasive species? It's a species not from the local area. The lionfish doesn't have any predators, so it messes up the food chain because nobody wants to eat it and it eats all of these other uh, fish and creates an imbalance. What's wrong with the Chinese tallow? Well, it grows so fast and it uh, takes over the forest area and reduces the light for the other plants and then they go extinct. So these invasive species cause plants and animals to go extinct. Where do they come from? Well, lionfish are pets in people's aquariums. They get too big and then they dump them in the Gulf of Mexico. Chinese tallow was brought from China for the soap to make soap out of and use it to make oils out of. Some people said Ben Franklin was involved. Duff's favorite fan. See this tree on the edge of this wetland? Look at these beautiful wetlands. It's an invasive species. Unfortunately, there's an invasive species in it called Chinese tallow. It's a Chinese tallow. This is Dangerous Dan. He's my new film crew. My regular film crew refuses to go back into this ecosystem, this wetland behind me, to explore it. Luckily, I've got Dangerous Dan. Um, my wife says this ecosystem, this wetland, has all kinds of snakes and animals, so she's scared to go out in it. Luckily, I got Dangerous Dan. Hey, Dangerous Dan, you wanna hear some snake jokes? I'd love to. What's the best unit of measurement to measure a snake with? Inches, because they don't have any feet. <laughs> hey, Dan, what do you call a snake that likes to build things? I don't know. A boa constructor! I uh, used to like This is a wetland ecosystem. This ecosystem is filled with all kinds of organisms. For example, there's all kinds of toads and frogs, which are amphibians, bear and deer, which are mammals, tons of birds. Um, there's also all kinds of bugs out here, like mosquitoes and spiders. And of course, there are some reptiles like snakes you know my wife's all scared about the snakes but you know what's that behind you huh 